In this video, I'd like to show you how you can use simple materials and a smartphone to teach about spectrophotometry and Beer's Law. Now, a spectrophotometer has three basic components. It's got a light source, a sample through which the light passes, and a light detector. And in the setup I have here, I'm using light reflected off of this green construction paper as my light source. My sample is just some power aid and my cell phone is being used as a light detector. I'll show you how to get this set up so that you can take some, some pretty good measurements. The first thing that you'll need to do is to decide what you're going to use to hold your samples. And what I've chosen is simply a solo plastic cup. Once you've decided what you're going to use for your sample holder, you'll need to cut a box that can hold your samples and what I've got here is is my box with a hole cut in the front so a solo cup can fit rather snugly in in it I've removed the back panel of the box so that light from the reflected off of the green paper can travel through the solution and then on the front of the box I have a window cut so that I can place my cell phone up here and uh, detect the light that's being reflected off of the paper goes through the solution and into the camera. You don't need to choose a solo plastic cup. You use all sorts of things that you can use. This is an example of a sample box that I cut to hold cuvettes. And once again, you're going to want to cut your box so that the sample rests near the front of the box. The color of construction paper that you're going to use in the background should be either red, green, or blue. And the color should be chosen so that it closely matches the complementary color to the color of the solution that you'll be using. And since green is the complement to red, it was very easy to choose a green background for these particular experiments. When taking these measurements, it's important to keep everything in a consistent position. And to help do that, I'm just going to tape down the box so that I can put samples in and out and things don't get bumped around a whole lot. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the cell phone as your detector. I'm using an iPhone and there's a particular app on the iPhone called Colorometer that works very well for for this purpose. I'm going to go ahead and open Colorometer and when I do you'll see that there's a screen that shows up and I can move this circle that you see just by tapping the screen. I'm going to go ahead and tap it here so I'm getting a lot of the green construction paper in the, in the view. And what this does is it takes the uh, pixels that are in the circle view and it, it averages them and it gives you the average R, G, and B values for the pixels that are found in the circle. So we're going to use this as our detector of green light that's passing through the solution. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up here so that I can see the solution in the camera view. And I'm going to go ahead and touch this so that I'm getting light that's coming being reflected off of the green background and going through the sample and being detected by the camera. I'm also going to press this button here that says auto so that it reads lock. I don't know what that does but I know it gives me better results so I'm going to make sure to do that. Now what we can do is we can compare the G value when light is passing through a red solution versus when it passes through water. And if I look at that G value right now, I see it's reading about 115. If I remove this particular cup and place in a cup that has water in, I see that that G value is much higher. It's reading 222. So I see that the red dye is absorbing green light. Now what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and use this to try to figure out how much red food dye number 40, also known as Allura Red, 
there is in Strawberry Powerade Zero. And what's convenient about this is I can use as a stock solution Fruit Punch Powerade Zero. Uh, I've measured the concentration of red dye number 40, again, which is also known as Allura Red. I've measured that in Fruit Punch Powerade Zero, and I found that to be 94 micromolar, or 94 times 10 to the negative 6 molar, red dye number 40 in this Fruit Punch Powerade Zero. And I've just diluted it to various extents to make my standard solutions. Okay, so first we're going to detect the green light that passes through our blank, which is just water. And it looks like my green value is going to be 214 for the blank. Now I'm going to test my standards. And again, my standards were made from the Fruit Punch Powerade Zero. This particular standard has a concentration of 1.02 micromolar red dye 40. And we can see that its green value is 189. So it looks like a little bit of that green light's been absorbed, which we'd expect. My next sample has a concentration of 2.97 micromolar. And the corresponding green value looks like 142. So it looks like a little more of the green light gets absorbed, which again we'd expect. Now we're going to move up to 4.83 micromolar. And my green value has dropped to 111. And next, we're going to measure the green value for a sample that has 9.14 micromolar red 40. And looks like my green value there has dropped all the way down to 71. Finally, we'll test the green value for my unknown. And remember, my unknown is uh, just straight uh, strawberry Powerade Zero. And it looks like my green value there is 116. Well, now it's time to analyze the data, see if we can't figure out what the concentration of red dye number 40 is in Strawberry Powerade Zero. Okay, I've opened up Microsoft Excel and I've entered in these cells here the various concentrations of red food dye, red dye number 40, that, uh, that we looked at and their corresponding G values. I'm not going to show you how to plot these in an absorbance versus concentration graph. To calculate absorbance, we're going to use this equation over here. Absorbance is going to be equal to the negative logarithm in base 10 of the green value of our sample in question divided by the green value of the blank. This I stands for intensity, I naught stands for the intensity of the blank. So for example, for the blank, which had a concentration of zero, over here in this uh, absorbance column, I'm going to highlight this cell and I'm, I'm going to type equals minus log parenthesis. I'm going to click cell B2 to indicate I want that particular G value divided by the intensity of the blank or the green value of the blank which is of course 214. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same in all these columns. The quickest way to do it is just to fill down. So in this column here We've taken the negative logarithm of 189 over 214. In this column, I've taken the negative logarithm of 142 over 214, and so forth. I'm just going to put the corresponding concentrations immediately to the left. That just makes it easier to graph. I'm going to highlight the data, and we're going to plot them. I'm going to insert a scatter plot, and our data look fairly linear. In our plot here, you should recognize that the y-axis represents absorbance and the x-axis is going to represent concentration in units of micromolar. I want to know what the equation for this line is, so I'm going to right-click on any data point, 
I'm going to add a trend line, display the equation on the chart, and also the R squared value. The closer that is to 1, the more linear the fit is. And if I look at my equation for the line, I see I have an R squared value of 0.9938, which isn't too bad. The equation for the line, y equals mx plus b, can be read as absorbance is equal to m, the slope, which is 0.0529, times x, which is the concentration, plus b, the intercept, which is 0 0.0093. A little bit of algebra on this equation here converts it into an equation that we can use to find the concentration of our unknown. You might recall that our absorbance, excuse me, our green intensity of our unknown was 116. So from that, I need to calculate the absorbance. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to use this equation to calculate the absorbance of my unknown. So in this cell, I'm going to type equals negative log. The green value of the unknown was 116, and we'll divide that by the green value for the blank. So I see that 0.266, approximately, is going to be the absorbance of the unknown. Now using this particular equation here, and our values over here, we can find the concentration of red dye number 40 in the unknown. First, I'm going to go ahead and take my absorbance and I'm going to subtract the intercept, which is 0 0.0093. So that's giving me the numerator. And now we're going to go ahead and divide by the slope to give me the concentration. So I'm just going to take this value right here. Here's my numerator, absorbance minus the intercept. And we're going to divide that by the slope, which that looks like 0 0.0529. And there we have it. The concentration of red dye number 40 that we found in the uh, strawberry Powerade Zero is approximately 4.85 micromolar. I hope you try this experiment. If you do, let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about how, how anything works, go ahead and leave your questions in the comments as well.